This video demonstrates minute ventilation as a function of frequency. Before I show the ventilator, the demonstrations on the ventilator and the test line, we're going to look at the mathematical models of pressure control ventilation. And this is just um, a simulator here. And I'm going to look at my compliance. And this is for no or little airway resistance or no airway obstruction. So my test lung, I'm using a resistance of 5. And my pressure, I'm going to set is 20, 20 centimeters of water. Duty cycle is 33% or 1 to 2 IE ratio. And what we're looking at is with increases in respiratory rate, and in the ventilator simulator, you'll see I'll increase the rate from 10 to 20 to 30 and 40. And you notice minute ventilation rises. And then if I would continue to increase my respiratory rate, it would finally plateau. And this is all determined by my inspiratory time, which is my duty cycle, and resistance. However, my compliance value determines the rate of rise. So I'm currently compliant to 10, and you see the steady rise to my plateau, which we don't even see it. So that's one scenario. I'm going to look at 10. I'm going to also look at 20. My compliance to approximately 20. What we notice here is with my increases in respiratory rate, yes, my minute ventilation is rising, and it's rising much quicker. And then we'll change the compliance again to approximately 50. And you notice my minute ventilation sharply rises. And then it finally plateaus off. So this, these videos will demonstrate, these scenarios will demonstrate that vit minute ventilation rises pretty rapidly to determine by my frequency and mostly my eye time. Thank you. This is a ventilator screen overview for our upcoming scenarios. So I wanted to introduce this to, so you'll know where to look when I'm narrating the videos. So the screen's broken down into sections. Um, this is our mode. It's not going to change at all pressure control because these videos are about pressure control. Here are my settings at the bottom right hand portion of the screen. I have my pressure control setting that's not going to change and my PEEP. However, I will be changing my respiratory rate or frequency. In the top left portion of the screen are my pressure and volume measured values. And particularly for this video, I want to focus on my exhaled minute ventilation. And here is my minute ventilation measurement. Also, I'll be opening up tab 2 to look at the compliance as used. And this shows our dynamic compliance in gray value and then one more thing to overview is I'm going to be manipulating my inspiratory time under my settings so here's my inspiratory time I'm going to be keeping the same IE ratio for these scenarios I'm going to be manipulating my eye time to keep a IE ratio of 1 to 2 this is a duty cycle 33% or inspiratory time fraction. My current uh, minute ventilation is 2 liters on this respiratory rate of 10. Now let's change the respiratory rate to 20 and let's see what this does to my minute ventilation. So I'm going to change it to 20 breaths per minute and I'm going to maintain the same duty cycle. And as you see, my minute ventilation increased. approximately 3.3 and 3.8 keeps on going up and now we will change the respiratory rate to 30 
and we'll still see a rise in my minute ventilation. And you look at my measured minute ventilation currently, it is 4.7, and it'll continue to go up. We're at 5.2. and 5.8 with this low compliance. And we're going to change the respiratory rate to 40 and we'll continue to see rises in my minute ventilation. Scenario two, we changed the compliance to 20. We made it more compliant. You notice my measured minute ventilation is 4.3 on this respiratory rate of 10. Now with this higher compliance or this better compliance, we should just see um, a sharper rise in minute ventilation with re every respiratory rate change. Now I'm going to change it to 20. And keep my duty cycle the same, or my IE ratio the same, or inspiratory time fraction, whatever you want to call it. And we'll look at our minute ventilation rise, and it's currently rising. We're at 5.2, 5.9, and it continues to rise. Like I said before, the measured values are about four breaths behind. you got to let it catch up. And we went up all the way to 7.2 liters and 8. We're still kind of climbing. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to increase the respiratory rate to 30. So on that rate of 20, we got approximately 8.2. So we went up by a couple liters, quite a bit. And change it 30, and let's see where we go from here. My minute ventilation is starting to rise. And we have already went up 2 liters. Now approximately 3 liters. close to four liters. So I'm going to go up to 40 breaths per minute and we should actually increase our minute ventilation by approximately another four liters based on my compliance. So this better compliance I'm going to have a greater rise in minute ventilation. We increased our compliance a little more, made it better. Our minute ventilation is 9.5 on a respiratory rate of 10. And now we should even see a sharper rise in minute ventilation with this on this compliance. So there's our compliance, approximately 50. And I will change the respiratory rate to 20 breaths per minute. Now let's what, see what it does to the measured minute ventilation. And I'm just making sure the duty cycle is the exact same, the one and two. And here we go. I'm increasing my minute ventilation over four liters. So it increased our minute ventilation by almost six liters with that tendon respiratory rate change. So, and then you notice we almost doubled it. So we're at 18.6 is our minute ventilation. That's increasing to 30. And our minute ventilation continues to rise sharply because of the better compliance. And you should notice my minute ventilation is quite higher. So on that respiratory rate of um, 10, we only had around a nine minute ventilation. And now we're at a 30. Or 26. We will increase the respiratory rate to 40 and let's see what that does. So what's starting to happen now is 
due to my respiratory compliance, we're starting to plateau off on my maximum attainable minute ventilation based on my respiratory time constant.